Hey guys, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com and in this video I'll show you how to make this knob that I'm demonstrating right now. Uh, this is part two of a series. I'll uh, link to part one in the video description so you can check that out if you haven't already. If you guys like this tutorial, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We come out with new reactor content once or twice a week. Alright, so this is where I left you last week. Um, basically, whichever part of the mouse area your mouse is hovering over, um, that knob will light up. And so now I need to, uh, we need to add something so that we can actually kind of click and drag on the mouse area and have the values be shown to us. So let's do that. To begin, I'm going to do a little bit of rearranging. Um, so that we can make a little bit more space in our macro here. So I'm just going to grab a bunch of this stuff and move it into a new macro. And uh, for those of you who don't know, um, if you want to grab a very specific um, group of modules, you can hold down the control button and click or click and drag to um, select all the controls you want at once. And then I'll paste them into this new macro here and uh, connect the inputs to the appropriate places. This will just give us a little bit more room to play around with in our parent macro. And again, the output of this macro is going to be a value from 0 to 4, where 0 uh, means that the mouse is not hovering over the mouse area at all, and a value from 1 to 4 tells you which knob is currently active. So now we can uh, connect this to the multi-picture and just uh, delete all of the other stuff that we had going on. I want to make the uh, macro invisible as well. And we can just get rid of this stuff. And that just looks a lot cleaner. All right. And so currently, this doesn't actually work exactly the way I want it to, um, because you can click and drag on the mouse area, and uh, when that happens, you, as if you're using it as a knob, you're going to want the uh, same area that was originally lit up to stay lit up. You don't want the uh, highlights to move along with your mouse once you're trying to move a knob. So what I'm going to do is make sure that the uh, multi-picture gets its values from a router that only is going to accept new input when the uh, left mouse button is off. So once you click with the mouse button, um, whatever's highlighted is going to stay highlighted until you uh, release the left mouse button. And we want to make sure that uh, when we release the mouse area that our multi-picture gets updated. So uh, we'll just store the output of the active macro into a value and trigger the value um, from the button. And this will only be sent if the uh, value of the button is a zero, which, is, uh, which gets sent whenever you release the uh, mouse button. Okay, so next let's create a new macro, and this is going to take the position input for the multi-picture. Um, we're going to take the Y value from the mouse area, and um, the left button input from the mouse area. And in this macro, we're going to decide which active knob, which knob is active using the position input. And we'll use that information to control four separate snap values that will store the value of our knobs. So I'm going to use a router 1 to M module, and we're going to have five outputs. Um, again, if the position is equal to zero, then uh, we're not doing anything with this and uh, we're only interested when the position is equal to a value from 1 to 4. 
So let's create a macro to control an individual knob. And this is going to take a Y value and the left button input for inputs. And so basically what this knob is going to do, um, or this macro is going to do, is whenever we receive a value, that means that the um, mouse is hovering over this area and we're receiving um, inputs from the mouse area. <clears throat> So, depending on whether the button is on or off, um, we can send the Y value to a couple different places. If the button is off, the only thing we want to do is store the value into a value module. And if it's on, we're going to trigger that value module and subtract the new input from it. So this will basically be a way to calculate the difference between our current y value and our previous y value. And that difference is the um, amount of movement that's happened in between um, the last event that we received and the current event that we are now receiving. So we'll subtract the um, value module from the current input. We only ever do this, um, all this stuff, when the left mouse button is clicked. So we'll store the uh, product of our subtraction and then trigger it on um, whenever the position is set to 1. And so this is the amount of movement that has occurred since our last input. So what we want to do is take that value and add it to our previously stored knob value. So we'll create a new value module for that, trigger it, and add the two values together. And we want to keep the total value coming out of this addition to be within the range from 0 to 1. So we want to you know, have a maximum and minimum value for our knob. And if you ever decide that you want to create a value, a knob that has values different than 0 to 1, you can just use the translate macro that we created in the previous video to uh, translate the 0 to 1 signal to any signal that you want. So create a macro called clip min max or clipper. And. Um, We'll have a minimum and a maximum value, and we'll use some separator modules to make sure that we stay within the range from 0 to 1. So if our input is less than or equal to the minimum value, then we'll simply trigger the minimum value to go to the output. And if it's larger than the minimum value, then we can check to see how it compares to the maximum value. And we'll end up merging all the outputs together. So if we end up being greater than the minimum value, we'll use another separator. And this time we'll check to see if we are greater than the maximum. And if so, we'll trigger the maximum value to go to the output. And if not, then we can just send the value straight to the merge module because it's both greater than the minimum and smaller than the maximum. So this is a fairly useful macro um, to make sure that any events are within a range that you choose. And I uh, actually saved this one to my computer because it's a structure that I use a lot and uh, it's pretty tedious to make over and over again the same structure that you've already made. So once we've made sure that our value is within the range from 0 to 1, we'll store it in a snap value and send it to the output. And we also want to store it in the value macro uh, module that we were using before. And since you're storing it into the value uh, module, there's no problem with uh, event loops here because it's being stored into an audio input and only gets triggered um, by a value at the other input. All right, so let's use a numeric readout to make sure this is working properly. 
And once again, let's set everything to be mono. And um, so if we click on the innermost circle and drag, you see we can choose the current value of the numeric readout. So this is working properly. So we can duplicate it four times. Uh, we'll, we'll duplicate it a total of three times, I guess, but there will be four of them. And each one of these will get its own output. Um, so we can send the value wherever we want. And um, we'll get rid of the numeric readout and replace it with something a little more visually pleasing. Um, <clears throat> so we can use multi-pictures for that task. And uh, what I'll do is we can use the... Well, let's take the time to load up the picture first. So I just created all these very simple pictures. Um, and I'll supply the appropriate Knobman files and the uh, graphics I made from them in a download. And we can just multiply the 0 to 1 value of our knob by the n minus 1 output of the multi-picture and send it to the select input of the multi-picture. Um, and this will act just like a knob now. And once again, we can duplicate this structure uh, a few times. And we need to load different graphics files for each one. But uh, it's a fairly simple process. And we have some tutorials on um, using Knobman already, so you can take a look at those um, if you want to get more into creating the custom graphics yourself. I definitely didn't go out of my way to create anything too intense for this tutorial. Um, so once we're done with all this, we can rearrange everything on the panel view, which takes a minute. And that'll pretty much be it. Um, next week, I'll show how we can use um, all the stuff that we created this week and last week to create some pretty advanced knobs with built-in modulation rings, with built-in spread, um, however you want to make them really. And um, that'll be uh, the end of this series probably, unless anybody uh, has any suggestions for anything else. Uh, once again, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I'll be back next week with some new content for you guys.